So the first the, inevitable, just to clarify, is what is will it, we stop? AI will not be stopped. Okay. So the okay. second inevitable is is they'll be significantly smarter. As much in the book, I predict a billion times smarter than us by twenty forty five. I mean, they're already what smarter than ninety nine point nine nine percent of the population. Hundred uh, yeah. percent. Chat GTP four knows more than any human on planet Earth. Knows yeah, more information. Ab absolutely, a thousand times more. A okay. thousand times more. By the way, the code of, G, of, of, of a transformer, the T in, in, a, in a GPT is 2000 lines long. It's not very complex. It's actually not a very intelligent machine. It's simply predicting the next word, okay? And, and a lot of people don't understand that. You know, chat GPT as it is today, you know those kids uh, that, uh, you know, if, you, in, if you're in America, and you teach your child uh, all of the names of the states and the US presidents and the child would stand and repeat them and you would go like, oh my God, that's a prodigy. Not really, right? It's your parents really trying to make you look like a prodigy by telling you to memorize some crap really. But then when you think about it, hmm, that's what ChatGPT is doing. It's, it's the only difference is instead of reading all of the names of the states and all of the names of the presidents, thread trillions and trillions and trillions of pages. Okay, and so it sort of repeats what the best of all humans said. Okay, and then it adds a, a, an incredible bit of intelligence where it can repeat it the same way Shakespeare would have said it. You know, those incredible abilities of predicting the exact nuances of the style of of Shakespeare so that they can repeat it that way and so on. But still, hmm? you know, when when I when I write. For example, and I'm not I'm not saying I'm intelligent, but when I write uh, something like uh, you know the happiness equation uh, in in my first book, this was something that's never been written before, right? ChatGPT is not there yet. All of the transformers are not there yet. They will not come up with something that hasn't been there before. They will come up with the best of everything, and generatively will build a little bit on top of that. But very soon, they'll come up with things we've never found out, we've never known. But even on that, I wonder if we are a little bit delusioned about what creativity actually is. Creativity, is, as far as I'm concerned, is yeah. like taking a few things that I know and combining them in new and interesting ways. Yeah. And ChatGTP is perfectly capable of like taking 100%. two concepts, merging them together. One of the things I said to ChatGTP was, I said, tell me something that's not been said before that's paradoxical but true. And it comes up with these wonderful expressions like, as soon as you call off the search, you'll find the thing you're looking for. Like these kind of paradoxical truths. Mm -hmm. And I go, and I then take them and I search them online to see if they've ever been quoted before and they, I can't find them. <laughs> it's interesting. So yeah. it, it, as far but, as creativity but, goes, I'm like, that is creative. That's the algorithm of creativity. I, I, I've been screaming that in the world of AI for a very long time because you always get those people who really just want to be proven right, okay? And so they'll say, oh no, but hold on, human ingenuity, they'll never they'll never yeah, match that. I, like, I, man, please, please, you know, human ingenuity is algorithmic. It it's is. look at all of the possible solutions you can find to a problem, take out the ones that have been tried before and keep the ones that haven't been tried before, and those are creative solutions. It's It's an algorithmic way of describing creative is good solution that's never been tried before. You can do that with ChatGPT with a prompt. It's like- And, and mid-journey yeah. with, with creating imagery. You could say, I want to see Elon Musk in 1944, New York driving a cab of the time shot on a Polaroid, expressing various emotions. And you'll get this perfect image of Elon sat in New York in 1944, shot on a Polaroid. And it's, and it's done what an artist would do. It's taken a bunch of references yeah. that the artist has in their mind and merged them together. And created this piece of quote unquote art. And, and for the first time, we now finally have a glimpse of intelligence hmm, that is actually not ours. Yeah. And so we're kind of, I think the, the initial reaction is to say, that doesn't count. You're hearing it with like, <laughs> no, but it is. Like Drake, yeah. they, they've released two Drake records where they've taken Drake's voice, used sort of AI to synthesize his voice and made these two records, which are bangers. If, mm -hmm. if I, they are great fucking tracks like yeah, i was playing them to my girlfriend i was like yeah. and i kept playing it i went to the show i kept playing it i know it's not drake but it's as good as fucking drake the only thing and people are like rubbishing it because it wasn't drake i'm like well hmm, for now is it making me feel a certain emotion uh, is my foot bumping 
Mm-hmm. Um, had you told, had, did I not know it wasn't Drake? Would I thought have thought this was an amazing track? A hundred percent. And we're just at the start of this exponential curve. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you something. Jack, can you pass me my phone? I I, I was um I was playing around with uh, artificial intelligence and I was thinking about how it because of the ability to synthesize voices, how we could synthesize famous people's voices and oh, famous man. people's voices. So what I made is I made a WhatsApp chat called Zen Chat, where you can go to it and type in pretty much anyone's, any famous person's name. Yeah. And the WhatsApp chat will give you a meditation, a sleep story, a breathwork session synthesized as that famous person's voice. So I actually sent Gary Vaynerchuk his voice. <laughs> so basically you say, okay, I want, I've got five minutes and I need to go to sleep. Yeah. Um, I want Gary Vaynerchuk to send me to sleep. And then it will respond with a voice note. This is the one that it responded with for Gary Vaynerchuk. This is not Gary Vaynerchuk. He did not record this, <laughs> but it's kind of, it's kind of accurate. Hey, Steven. It's great to have you here. Are you having trouble sleeping? Well, I've got a quick meditation technique that might help you out. First lie, find a comfortable position to sit or lie down in. Now, take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly breathe out through your mouth. It is really shocking, huh? The idea of you and I inevitably are going to be somewhere in the middle of nowhere in, you know, in 10 years time. I I used to say 2055, I'm thinking 2037 is a very pivotal moment now, uh, you know, and, and, and we will not know if we're there hiding from the machines. We don't know that yet. There is a likelihood that we'll be hiding from the machines and there is a likelihood it will be there because they don't need podcasters anymore. Oh, and, excuse me. Uh, oh, absolutely true. Steve, no, mate, there's that's where absolutely... I draw the line. No, 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 that's where I draw the line. There's this absolutely no. no doubt. Thank you for coming, mate. It's great to do the part three and thank you for being here. <laughs> yes. But I won't exactly. sit here and take your propaganda. Well, let, let, let's, let's talk about reality. Next week on The Diary of Sea, we've got <laughs> Elon Musk. Um. <laughs> okay, so who, who here wants to make a bet no, that no, no, Stephen no. Bartlett will be interviewing an AI within the next two years? Oh, well, actually, uh, to be fair, I actually did go to ChatGZP because I thought having you here, I thought at least give it its chance to respond. Yeah. So I asked oh, it a couple of questions. About me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So today I'm actually going to be replaced by ChatGZP because I thought, you know, you're going to talk about it. So we need a, a uh-huh. fair and balanced debate. <laughs> okay. And, so I went and asked and, it a couple of questions. He bold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'll ask you a couple of questions that ChatGTP has for you. Incredible. So let's follow that thread. So I've already been replaced. Let's follow that thread for a second, yeah? Because you're one of the smartest people I know. That's not true. It is. But I'll take it. It it is true. I mean, I say that publicly all the time. Your book is one of my favorite books of all time. You're very, 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 very intelligent. Okay? Depth, breadth, uh, 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 intellectual horsepower, and speed. All of them. There's a but coming. (laughs) The reality is it's not a but. So it is highly expected that you're ahead of this curve. And then you don't have the choice, Stephen. The, this is the thing. The thing is, if... So I'm I'm in that existential question in my head. Because one thing I could do hmm, is I could literally take... I, I normally do a 40 days uh, silent retreat uh, in, in summer, okay? I could take that retreat and, and write two books, me and Chad GPT. Right, I have the ideas in mind. You know, I, I wanted to write a book about uh, digital detoxing. Right, I have most of the ideas in mind, but writing takes time. I could simply give the fifty tips that I wrote about digital detoxing to ChatGPT and say, write two pages about each of them, edit the pages, and have a, a, a book out. Okay. Many of us will will follow that path. Okay. The only reason why I may not follow that path is because, you know what. I'm not interested. I'm not interested to continue to compete in this capitalist world, if you want, okay? I'm not. I mean, as a, as, as, a, as, as a human, I've made up my mind a long time ago that I will want less and less and less in my life, right? But many of us will follow. I mean, I, I, I would worry if you, do, if you didn't include, a, you know, the smartest AI, if we get an AI out there that is extremely intelligent and able to teach us something, and Stephen Bartlett didn't include her on our uh, on his podcast, I would worry. Like, you have a duty almost to include her on your podcast. It's, it's an inevitable that we will engage them in our life more and more. This is one side of this. Hmm? The other side, of course, is 
if you do that, hmm, then what will remain? Because a lot of people ask me that question. What will happen to jobs? Okay, what will happen to us? Will we have any value, any relevance whatsoever? Okay, the truth of the matter is the only thing that will remain in the medium term is human connection. Okay, the only thing that will not be replaced is Drake on stage. Okay, is you know, is 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 me in a. Do you, do you think a hologram? I think of that Tupac gig they did at Coachella where they used the hologram of Tupac. I actually played it the other day to my to my girlfriend when I was making a point, and I was like, that was circus act. It was amazing though. Think amazing, about, yeah. See what's going on with ABBA in London? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, and, and Cirque du Soleil had uh, uh, Michael Jackson in one for a very long time, yeah. I mean, so, so this ABBA show in London, from what I understand, that's all holograms on stage. Correct. And it's gonna run in a purpose-built arena for 10 years, and it is incredible. It really is. So you go, why do you need Drake? Great if question. that hologram is indistinguishable from Drake, and it can, it can perform even better than Drake, and it's got more energy than Drake. And it's, you know, I go, why do you need Drake to even be there? I can go to a Drake show without Drake, cheaper. I, and look, I might not even need to leave my house. I could just put a headset on. Correct. Can you have this? What's the value of this? To, to the, oh, to the come listener. on, you, you hurt me. No, no, Ouch. I mean, I get it to us. <laughs> I get it to us, but I'm saying, what's the value of this to the listener? Like the value of this no, to the listener no, is the information, no, oh, right? No, 100%. I mean, think of the automobile industry. Hmm? There has, you know, there was a time where Cars were made, you know, handmade and handcrafted and luxurious and so on and so forth. And then, you know, Japan went into the scene, completely disrupted the market. M cars were made uh, in uh, in mass quantities at a much cheaper price. And yes, 90% of the cars in the world today, or maybe, maybe a lot more, I don't know the number, uh, are no longer, uh, you know, uh, um, emotional items. Okay, mm -hmm. They're functional items. Mm -hmm. There is still, however, every now and then, someone that will buy a car that has been handcrafted, and, mm -hmm. right? There is a place for that. There is a place for, you know, uh, if you go uh, walk around hotels, uh, you, the walls are blasted with sort of mass produced art, okay? Mm -hmm. But there is still a place for a, an artist expression sure. of something amazing, okay? My feeling is that there will continue to be a tiny space, as I said in the beginning, Maybe in five years time, someone will, one or two people will buy my next book and say, hey, it's written by a human. Look at that, wonderful. Uh, oh, look at that, there is a typo in here, okay? We, I don't know. There might be a, a very, very big place for me in the next few years where I can sort of show up and talk to humans. Like, hey, let's get together in a, a small event. And then, you know, I can express emotions and my personal experiences. And you sort of know, that this is a human talking. You'll miss that a little bit. Eventually, the majority of the market is gonna be like cars. It's gonna be mass produced, very cheap, very efficient. It works, right? Because I think sometimes we underestimate what human beings actually want in an experience. I remember the story of a friend of mine that came to my office many years ago, and he tells the story of the CEO of a record store standing above the floor and saying, people will always come to my store because people love music. Now, on the surface of it, his hypothesis seems to be true because people do love music. It's conceivable to believe that people will always love music, but they don't love traveling in, for an hour in the rain and getting Correct. in a car to get a plastic disc. Correct. What they wanted was music. What they didn't want is a, like a, evidently plastic discs that they had to travel for miles for. And I think about that when we think about like public speaking and the Drake show and all of these things, like people, what people actually are coming for, even with this podcast, is probably like information. Um, but do they really need us anymore for that information when there's going to be a sentient being that's significantly smarter than at least me and a little bit smarter than you? So, <laughs> <laughs> so kind. <laughs> so so you're, you're spot on. You are spot on. And actually, this is the reason why I, 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 you know, I, I'm so grateful that you're hosting this because the truth is the genie's out of the bottle. Okay. So, you know, people tell me, is AI game over? For our way of life, it is. Okay, for everything we've known, hmm, this is a very disruptive moment where maybe not tomorrow, but in the near future, uh, our way of life will differ. Okay, uh, what will happen? What I'm asking people to do is to start considering what that means to your life. What I'm asking governments to do by, like I'm screaming, is don't wait until the first patient. 
you know, start doing something about. We're about to see mass job losses. We're about to see, you know, replacements of uh, of categories of jobs at large. Okay, yeah, it may take a year. It may take seven. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Hmm? But it's about to happen. Are you ready? And I and I have a very very clear call to action for governments. I'm saying tax AI powered businesses at 98 percent, right? So suddenly you do what the open letter was trying to do, slow them down a little bit, and at the same time, get enough money to pay for all of those people that will be disrupted by the technology. When you talk about the the immediate impacts on jobs, I'm trying to figure out in that equation, who are the people that stand to lose the most? Is it the the everyday people in foreign countries that don't have access to the internet and won't benefit? You talk in your book about how this the sort of wealth disparity will only increase. Yeah. Massively. The, the, the immediate impact on jobs is that, and it's really interesting, huh? again, we're stuck in the same prisoner's dilemma. The immediate impact is that AI will not take your job. A person using AI will take your job, right? So you will see within the next few years, maybe next couple of years, uh, you'll see uh, uh, a lot of people skilling up, upskilling themselves in AI to the point where they will do the job of 10 others who are not. You're saying tax tax those companies ninety eight percent. Give the money to the humans that are going to be displaced. Oh, yeah, or give or give the, com- the the money to to other humans that can build control code that can figure out how we can stay safe. This sounds like an emergency. It, how, how do I say this? Have you, you remember when you played Tetris? Yeah. Okay. When you were playing Tetris, there was you know always always one block that you placed wrong. Mm. And once you place that block wrong, it, it, the game was no longer easier. You, you know, it started started to gather a few mistakes afterwards, and it st- starts to become quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. When you place that block wrong, you sort of told yourself, "Okay, it's a matter of minutes now." Right? There were still minutes to go and play and have fun mm, before the game ended, but you knew it was about to end. Okay, this is the moment. We've placed the wrong. And I really don't know how to say this any other way. It even makes me emotional. We fucked up. We always said, don't put them on the open internet. Don't teach them to code and don't have agents working with them until we know what we're putting out in the world, until we find a way to make certain that they have our best interest in mind. Why does it make you emotional? Because humanity's stupidity is affecting people who have not done anything wrong. Our greed is affecting the innocent ones. The the reality of the matter, Stephen, is that this is an arms race. Has no interest in what the average human gets out of it. It is all about every line of code being written in AI today is to beat the other guy. It's not to to improve the life of the third party. People will tell you this is all for you. And and you you look at the reactions of humans to AI. I mean, we're either ignorant, people who will tell you, oh, no, no, this is not happening. AI will never be creative. They will never compose music. Like, where are you living? Okay. Then you have the kids, I call them, hmm? where, uh, you know, all over social media, it's like, oh, my God, it squeaks. Look at it. It's orange in color. Ah, Amazing. I can't believe that AI can do this. We have snake oil salesmen, okay, which are simply saying, copy this, put it in chat GPT, then go to YouTube, nick that thingy, don't respect a, you know, copyright for, of anyone or intellectual property of anyone, place it in a video, and now you're going to make $100 a day. Snake oil salesmen, okay? Of course, we have dystopian uh, 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 evangelists, basically people saying, this is it, the world is going to end, which I don't think is reality. It's a singularity. You have... Uh, you know, uh, utopian evangelists that are telling everyone, oh, you don't understand, we're going to cure cancer, we're going to do this. Again, not a reality, okay? And you have very few people that are actually saying, what are we going to do about it? Hmm? And 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 the biggest challenge, if you ask me, what went wrong in the 20th century? Hmm? Interestingly, is that we have given too much power to people that didn't assume the responsibility. So, you know, you know, I, I, I don't remember who originally said it, but of course, Spider-Man made it very famous. Huh? With great power comes great responsibility. We have disconnected power and responsibility. So today, a, a 15-year-old, emotional with 
out of fully developed prefrontal cortex to make the right decisions yet, this is science. Huh? We, we develop our prefrontal cortex fully in, at age 25 or so. With all of that limbic system, emotion and passion, would buy a, a CRISPR kit and you know modify a, a rabbit uh, to become a little more muscular and, and let it loose in the wild. Hmm? Uh, or an influencer who doesn't really know how far the impact of what they're posting online can hurt or cause depression or cause people to feel bad, okay? Uh, and, and putting that online, we, th there is a disconnect between the power and the responsibility. And the problem we have today is that there is a disconnect between those who are writing the code of AI and the responsibility of what's going about to happen because of that code, okay? And, and, and it, I feel compassion for the rest of the world. I feel that this is wrong. I feel that, you know, for someone's life to be affected by the actions of others without having a say in how those actions should be is the ultimate, the, the, the top level of stupidity from humanity. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.